Hey there everyone, happy Easter to you. Uh, welcome to my UB Chef tasting menu for this Easter weekend. Uh, so I've got a number of courses coming up for you. Um, like we did before, um, we've got a vegetarian vegan option, uh, which I'm gonna plate alongside uh, the meat and fish option as well. So this shows UB Chef is suitable for all. If your family's got someone who can't eat something or diet, or gluten free, we can absolutely uh, do a menu for you. So we'll take you through the menu now. Also in the box, a little surprise for you, a little gift from us, um, lovely jar of homemade lemon curd. So um, hot cross buns, lovely and hot, spread your lemon curd on just for a, a treat earlier in the day, so that's in the box. Um, but for now, let's get cooking, I'll take you through the menu. Okay, so first course coming up now. Uh, I should point out recipe booklet that comes in your box, uh, it's the same each week. Um, remember, instructions really easy to follow here. So everything is cooked 190 degrees. So set your oven. You've got a little information here about how the labeling system works on the pots, whether it's fridge, freezer, room temperature. Uh, lovely little introduction for me. And yeah, really, really straightforward. So um, let's start now. We've got our tomatoes, um, both dishes. Lovely little salad of white tomatoes. And then I've got a foil brick pastry tube here. Um, we've got goat cheese. This is green barn goat cheese to pipe inside it. Uh, this one, um, I've got a little vegan um, cheese, like cream cheese to go inside. Um, and then garnishes, we've got um, semi-dried tomatoes. This is, these have just sort of been uh, dehydrated at a very low temperature in the oven. Um, some flowers, just to jazz it up so you've got some lovely, beautiful, so you've got some nasturtiums in there, all sorts of things. Um, we've done a little salt mixture for you. This is a tomato salt um, with some uh, black onion seeds, really, really aromatic. Um, some great parmesan to go on the top of the tube. This one's got again a little great vegan cheese. Um, yeah, so let's let's get going. So with your um, tomatoes, I've sent you with this little tomato dressing. And we way we uh, make this, we make like a stock um, with the tomatoes by chopping them all up: basil, onion, a touch of white wine, and vinegar, and then we um, leave it overnight and hang it up in a muslin cloth the next day. And you get this lovely tomato water come out the bottom. And then we mix it a bit of Isle of White rapeseed oil, lovely fresh. So I'm putting a bit of that dressing on each of my tomatoes. And then a little bit of extra seasoning if you prefer. Remember, taste as you go, most important thing. And then give them a really good stir. And that dressing will coat all of them just like a salad. Great flavour. So really, really important getting them all mixed together. And then what we'll do next, so I've got two plates here, one for my uh, non-vegan, one for vegan, so I'm just gonna start plating my tomatoes. And you wanna do this kind of very close to when you serve it, because otherwise the tomatoes will start to leak um, like the water out of them, as you, especially as you get that sort of that seasoning on there from the dressing. So let's get all our nice tomatoes arranged. If you've not tried the Isle of White tomatoes before, I urge you to give them a try, they're absolutely stunning. And then I'll plate for my vegan as well. So we try and keep the menu as much as the same as possible. And just rework some of those elements in there, taking out any of the uh, animal products in there. So tomatoes are all nearly plated. There we go. Right, let's get rid of our two bowls. And then next, get your little semi-dried tomatoes. I'm just gonna put them again, dot them in between. The reason we do the two types here, these ones have got a much more concentrated flavor. You get that little texture from there, little, nice little chewy sort of texture. Bit of variation. And the same on this one. There you go. So, next stage. So you see it's lovely and quick. Not too much work to do. Right, quick clean down. Right, then you've got your piping bag and your piping bag for the vegan. So I'm just gonna cut it, sharp knife, both ends. And just get rid of those. And then get your tube, get the end of your nozzle from the piping bag and just pipe your Chew full of that goat's cheese. I'll turn it around carefully. And there we go. Yep, yeah, so nice and piped inside. 
like so. Now I'll do my other one as well. It's easier to pipe from both ends just so you get it nice and even. So we'll get those out of the way. And then the next thing, I'm just gonna put a little bit of cheese on the top of them. This is just for the eye. And the same, got some nice aged parmesan here. There we go. And then a little bit of that salt. Remember that flavored salt that I said about? Tiny bit on the top. Really nice. Okay. Then take your little tube and sit that just on the top of the tomatoes. Place it really sort of carefully so it's not going to roll off as you take it to the table. There we go. Clean my board down. And then what's left to do, let's get our flowers on. So this stage, we've sent you the flowers sort of still with the, like the little stamen um, in there and also the little under sort of carriage of the flower. So you don't want to put that on the plate, it can be bitter. So just pick off some of those leaves, petals, sorry, not leaves, and then place them all around the salad. So try and vary the colours here so you get a beautiful kind of effect of them against the tomatoes. And you'll see in that pot as well, there's some purple basil at the bottom. So we're just going to keep on going with those. We've got a few more in the pot here. So it's starting to look really, really nice now. I've got a couple of those yellow ones there. There we go. So really worth spending a bit of time on this. Like so, I'm happy with that. And then let's take some of those little purple basils. Just get some of those in. Of course with the tomato flavour, it's absolutely stunning. Few more. I'm just using my fingers here because they're quite quick. But if you've got a little posh pair of tweezers, you can use them. There we go. So see how that all the colours really built up like nice in there now. Quick tidy down with my board. Now I'm going to go back for a touch of dressing and just finish the plate like so. I think you'll agree, looking really beautiful, lovely and light. And that's my first course. So salad of Isle of White tomatoes, which are, of course are the best. Um, Green bar goat's cheese, a little vegan cheese here, herbs and flowers on the top, on the top, the tomato water dressing, a really lovely way to start the Easter tasting menu. Hope you enjoyed the first course. Hope you all enjoyed the first course. Those lovely tomatoes with a beautiful goat's cheese in the tube. Uh, a little bit chefy as well, but it's Easter, we need to push ourselves. Um, so next course we've got a risotto. Uh, this is a risotto of crab um, in this one. Um, I've put my, my liquor in there as well. So we send you with a little pot of these uh, risotto liquor, uh, which has uh, been cooked with the risotto to start with, so full of starch, and that's what makes it go nice and creamy. It's also got the sea herb and lemon butter in. So that's my crab one. And then the second uh, risotto, um, vegan, um, is this asparagus risotto, vegan butter in there, vegan creme fraiche, which is in the cooking stock. Uh, so that's all in as well. So make sure in, you put, in the pan you put your uh, risotto, the butter, and the cooking liquor as well. Then we've got asparagus to go with both dishes. We've got green and white, lovely uh, big spears of asparagus. That's got a little herb butter on. That's gonna go in the oven for about four to five minutes. And then we've got the rest of the garnish, obviously crab to finish the risotto off with. Um, and then both of them have a little uh, sort of samphire grass with seaweed, blanched chilli and some Amalfi lemon just to go on the side. So I'm going to get my risotto on the, on the heat now. Give it a good stir, keep stirring it as it heats up. Four minutes once it comes to the, uh, to the simmer. And we'll be back shortly and I'll show you how to plate up. Okay, so a couple of plates all warmed up there, ready for the risottos. I've got my sea herbs ready and my crab, of course. So 
risottos are all ready, nice and creamy. I stirred it a good few times whilst it was cooking out with the liquor. And then we've got my asparagus risotto there. So let's get the garnish out. So where that's just got that little bit of uh, butter on there on both of them. Lovely glazed asparagus spears. I like to put a tiny little bit of extra mold and salt on as well. Okay, let's plate. So let's do our risotto on both plates first of all. Nice portion. So let's get all of that on there. And then just that spoon just nicely spread that out. Okay. Then a vegan version. This has got the vegan creme fraiche going through here as well, just in that liquor. There we go. Okay, clean down both of the pans. So, let's get some asparagus on it then. So, got a couple of spears of both green and white, my vegan version. Here we go. And then, just a little bit of a nice sea herb just to garnish. So you've got some seaweed mixed in there, some little samphire grass, and a touch of chili. But we've blanched it just to take some of the heat out because obviously we want to make sure we're tasting the asparagus. This is the star of the show here. So a touch more seaweed. There we go. And then, of course, a nice wedge of that Amalfi lemon on the side. And then I'm gonna go over here. Let's get my asparagus on the same. Now I've got some, just some white crab meat. I'm not gonna do anything to that. I just want it on sort of room temperature. Just bring it out of the fridge for sort of five, 10 minutes before you're gonna serve it. Nice bit of crab on there. And then finish, of course, same as my previous version, just with a little bit of sea herbs a little bit of chilli there we go bit of time spent just making sure that's all nicely arranged your little dulse in there really nice seaweeds and then of course your lemon mouthy lemon, a little wedge just to squeeze over at the table for that bit of extra freshness clean the edge of the plates you prefer like me, I like to have a little bit of rape store just on the top. That just dresses everything up on there. There we go. So that's the second course for you. Nice and quick to do. Um, two risottos, making the most of the asparagus new season. Um, beautiful crab on this one, and both with the salad of, of uh, sea herbs and red chili. Enjoy the next course. So it's uh, on to the main course now. Um, and again, two main courses for you. Uh, first, uh, my vegan option, I've got this lasagna uh, layered up with um, wild garlic. So I've got wild garlic puree in there, soto wild mushrooms, um, and you've got a little uh, vegan cheese on the top of it as well. Mushroom bechamel going through the center. And it's to go in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. So in that goes. Um, garnishes with that, I've got little uh, soto mushrooms. I've got a little sourdough bruschetta. Um, these lovely little wild garlic leaves, um, which you just sort of push the big wild garlic over and then you find these like, little shoots underneath. They're nice and delicate. Wild garlic pesto, and then we've got a little uh, sherry vinegar dressing as well to go on there. Um, and then my other main course, uh, I've got a saddle of lamb. Um, so this is a completely boned out saddle of lamb. Lovely lamb fast in the middle. Again, wild garlic laid in there. I've got a hot pot of lamb, so this is uh, the shoulder, slow cooked down, potato, and then some nice foil and brick around the outside. Uh, lamb sauce, broccoli puree, charred lamb, and then wild garlic oil, and those um, lovely little um, small wild garlic leaves on there. So start off with your lamb. Um, just carefully cut that open. This is cooked already, so we've um, sort of water bathed this for a good amount of time to break that fat down, but if you can see there, like lovely layers going through the lamb, so you've got that beautiful fast. So what you want to do with this is have a non-stick pan, a little bit of oil in there, give my hands a quick wash. So tiny bit of oil as well. And I'll just bring this over so you can see what's happening here. So 
So most important, nice and hot here. And then as it cooks, you basically want to keep turning it. You see that colour that it's just starting to go there. You need that all the way around. So best thing to do, I'd say 30 seconds or a minute or so on each side, and just keep on turning it around. The reason we haven't coloured this here um, is because it's much, much better if it's done just before it goes in the oven. Then you get that lovely fat with that little crispy sort of almost coating around the outside. So we'll just keep colouring that off. Just use the sort of side of the pan to let the lamb rest at the edge. Lovely. And then, as I said, um, once that's all done, we'll get our little shoulder in the oven. So I'm going to put that over there. That's going to be about 10, 12 minutes in the oven. You've got charred broccoli, about four or five minutes in the oven. That's all going to go over. The same as your uh, sourdough and mushrooms. So I'll get all that ready to go over. I've got my garnishes just here, my uh, wild garlic shoots. I'm just going to put those back in the fridge um, until I'm ready to serve. So they're going to go back in there just so they don't wilt. And then my broccoli puree and my sauce. I'm just going to get ready to heat up. So I'm just going to bring that back again and just show you. See how that's. Very simple, just to colour that up in the pan. So, keep on doing that. My wild garlic oil is ready for that one. Once I've uh, coloured this lamb off, that's going to go in the oven um, for about 18 minutes. So, in your recipe book, I've said for a, tape for a portion of two, which this is, because uh, I'm quite, quite hungry, um, that's going to be 18 minutes. If you want it well done, add an extra five minutes to the total. But in there, it gives you all the stages of how long to cook it for. So. This is going to go in the oven. When it comes out, rest it for at least 10, 20 minutes um, so it all calms down and the fat yeah, sort of like rests nicely. Um, and then I'll be back and I'll show you how to put this together. Okay, so all ready to plate our main course here. A couple of plates warmed up. Now we'll plate the vegan version first. So I've got my bruschetta, my mushrooms, and of course my lasagna already there. And then I'm just going to take out my lamb pressing already. And I've got my charred broccoli, just there, charred tender stem. And then a little while ago, I took my lamb out, so you can see there, that's all resting. So lovely and coloured all around the outside. I've left the string on it, most important. So that's all going to stay there. And then just in preparation, let's bring my lamb sauce over and my broccoli puree. So I've got everything here already now. So my lasagna, make sure you've got a spatula ready to, to lift that out. Uh, but let's start with our bruschetta. So take out your bruschetta out of the tray and then just get a spoon and get some of those wild mushrooms. And I'm gonna sit them on top. There we go. There we go. So all of those nicely sat on top. And then we'll get a little bit of our uh, wild garlic pesto and just nice, a yeah, good amount of that on the top of there, like so. Then let's get our lasagna to make sure it's all nice and released from around the edge, and then we'll just go under. Lovely smell coming off of that. Then I'm going to put my bruschetta just on the edge, like so. And now also send you these little wild garlic shoots. And also you should have a little bit of garlic blossom in there. So let's get a couple of those. They do have a little sort of strength to them. Nothing like eating a big, big uh, leaf of wild garlic, but still have a try first, but they are quite oniony. And then some of those blossoms, which again, beautiful flavor from them but if you don't prefer it sort of too garlicky then I'd leave those just off or use them sparingly and then let's finish with a bit of warm sherry vinegar dressing touch over the top and over the top of our bruschetta there we go so that's our vegan course just done let's move that to the side and then Let's go to our lamb. So take your lamb out, then get a pair of scissors and don't cut the fat, but just cut the actual string. So put the point under, snip, snip. Remember this is a portion for two that I've, I've done here. And then 
peel each piece of string back without tearing that fat. So there we go, and then right the way around, nice and careful with that because the fat is very, very thin where we've sort of rolled it and battered it out nicely. Beautiful. So that's our lamp. Then what I'm going to do is take my pressing. So this is something I've had on the menu for a long time at the restaurant. This is our little take on hot pot. So this is the lamb shoulder, all kind of layered up. And we confit the lamb shoulder really slowly. I'm gonna take a little bit of my lamb sauce and just glaze up the top so it's all lovely and shiny. Beautiful. And let's sit that onto our plate, like so. Let's go back for some broccoli. This is charred tender stem here. Get a lovely smoky flavour. Just gonna put a bit, and this is so I can sit my lamb on there. Then take your warmed up broccoli puree, silky smooth little spoon, and then we're all ready to slice our lamb. So up to you how you do this, but I quite like to just go straight through the middle. A nice sharp knife, and then look at that. So beautiful and pink. Up to you, but I quite like a little bit of extra seasoning. And sit that just on the top. There we go. And then same again, some little wild garlic shoots. Just place those on there. It is the season. I like to show off what we've used in the recipe. And of course, a little bit of blossoms from the from the flowers of the garlic. So I'm just going to poke one in there, make that look lovely and beautiful. A little one on top of a garlic, on the top of a lamb. Sorry. All that's left. Let's take some lamb sauce. On we go. There we go. A little bit of lamb sauce, and then we've also made you a little wild garlic oil. So. I like to just split the actual sauce from the lamb with a touch of that garlic oil. And there we go, all done. So, two lovely dishes there for you. The rolled salad of lamb, stuffed little lamb, fast wild garlic, lamb shoulder hot pot, a lasagna of wild garlic with bruschetta. Hope you enjoy the main course. So on to cheese course now. Uh, this is an optional, optional course uh, this week, so if you haven't ordered it, you can skip past this bit, or if you want to have a look at uh, what our cheese course looks like, watch away. Um, so first one is our uh, Ubi Chef cheese tasting plate. You get all the cheese notes here as usual, lovely little pictures here telling you where, uh, what, it's, where it's from, where it's cow's milk, ewe's milk, etc. Yeah, you get uh, where, it, where it's from, where it's pasteurized, unpasteurized, and a lovely bit of information about it so you can uh, refresh your guests or put it on the table read away. Penal seed crackers, going my, with my little cheese board, so I've got uh, five selection of cheese in here, uh, quince jelly, a little chutney to go with it, um, and then my vegan cheese, of course, this week, um, so a little bit different, this is a camembert, uh, but it's completely vegan, so it's cashew nut based in here. This is, we've just put some fennel, pink peppercorn, a little bit of seasoning on there, uh, sliced garlic as well. Wrap it up in the paper, and that's gonna go in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. And that goes. Cook it a little bit less if you prefer it. It doesn't go completely soft, uh, but still, the, the flavour from that is really, really nice. It's kind of almost as if you're eating at the actual cheese. Um, and then I've got some vegan crackers, again, fennel seed to go with, and of course my chutney and a little quince. So I'll be back in about, about 20 minutes or so, and I'll show you how to put both of the cheese courses together. So I'm just going to get my cheese out of the oven now. This is the baked camembert style cheese. So. Let it rest on the uh, board for a couple of minutes just because it's quite hot. So as you can see, just open it up. So that's all baked with the, the garlic in there. And then for your other cheese, what you need to do is just cut the uh, little cheese out the, out the parchment and then just unwrap it. Most importantly, this has been sat on the board for a good 25 minutes before you actually plate it. Uh, just so it all warms up and the cheese is served at the perfect temperature. Then let's get some of our chutney, same chutney for both of my cheese courses this week. Let's get that into our pots. 
We've got a little bit of quince as well to serve with it. So get a touch of quince just on that edge for my baked cheese. And then these all come in sort of like the tasting order according to your cheese notes, which are all here. So just arrange them according to that list. And they go like up in strength and flavor as you go through. So we'll get all those arranged nicely on there. This bow valve this week is absolutely stunning. Really, really lovely. A little bit of quince. There we go, both cheeses all on. And then I'm just gonna get some of my crackers. This is the fennel seed crackers. We just rolled them through the pasta machine so they're really nice and nice and fine. And then place a few of those in your fork or a little bowl. And the same again. Break a few, sit those nicely there. So they're all on. And then get your cheese, take that out. I like to serve it in the paper. So just kind of undo that. We'll sit our cheese just on the side there. And you can take it to the table. There you go, bend that paper down like so. And there you have it. Two nice cheese courses before dessert um, or after if you prefer. Um, house chutney quince with both fennel seed crackers and again this uh, vegan, this vegan uh, camembert style cheese uh, again with the fennel seed crackers. Hope you enjoy. So it's on to dessert uh, now. A um, little bit of fun with this one as well. Uh, this is the Easter Bunny's garden. Uh, so what we've sent you up here, a couple of flower pots uh, first and foremost to, to present this in. Um, so again, I'm going to do my normal and my vegan version on this one. Um, we've got a carrot cake for you. Um, so this is my vegan carrot cake, which I'm just going to demold. And I'm just going to slice. Uh, you can break it up if you want, completely up to you. But I'm just going to slice my carrot cake into some nice cubes. Again, it's all going to be covered up. This is just so that you can kind of plate up. I'm just going to clean my knife quick up. And then my other carrot cake. Just put that on this side of the board. The same again. I'm just going to put it into some nice cubes. So, what you want to do then, take both your flower pots, we'll do the vegan one first, and you'll sort of see that, see how it goes. Put a couple of cubes into your pot, and then I'll set you with um, a cream cheese mousse. So, this is like a, this is a vegan cream cheese, and also a chocolate mousse here as well. So, what I'm going to do, just pipe little bits of the mousse as we go and then basically build it up with more carrot cake on the top put a little bit of your gel in so this is a salted caramel flavored Kahlua gel just put a little bit of spoons of that in as you layer it a little bit more carrot cake and then what we're going to do is time it more mousse like so the idea is here that you're getting different kind of levels of flavour as you go through. So, like that, keep going. And same again. Start to, when you get to the top, what you want to do is be making sure it's starting to be nice and level. Because then we're going to put, of course, a chocolate soil on the top. A bit more of my cream cheese one. There we go. Okay. And then let's finish this one with the soil. So this is like a vegan brownie that we've done here. But it's got some cocoa nibs in there as well. So I'm just gonna shake those nice and level. And then let's do our other one here. Exactly the same way. Carrot cake in. There we go. And then let's go cream cheese. Our dark chocolate mousse as well. And also our gel. So there's no set way of layering this up, but just nice little different pockets of flavor. More carrot cake, oh, more carrot cake. In we go. And then just, as I said, when you get to the top, kind of just push it down slightly, and you can get it all nice and 
level goes back with my cream cheese lovely and then same again on this one soil onto the top there we go so this stage now what I'm going to do is put both my pots onto my serving plates it's going to have a little clean down here move all of these things out of the way a little clean down on my board and then I'll show you how I'm going to finish these ones off so there we go I've sent you with some candied carrots and some props of course so you've got little carrots which I suggest you do is just kind of just sort of poke them in the top just so they kind of like sort of sit out the side like so if you need to just take a little hole take a little sort of like punch and just sit them in the bottom there we go and I'm just gonna do that on this one as well cut the edge off just to make them poke in a little bit more and final one there so they're all poking in and then the same on this one and then the next bit a little bit more fun so it's hard to get the kids involved in there we go they're all poked in there again quick clean down and then you've got some final little bits to go on so little bunny and that one goes and then you've got some chocolate eggs Again, all going nicely with the flavour. That one's got a little vegan chocolate on the top. And then you've, you've got these ones. Just some little steaks that you can write Happy Easter on. And you can put those just in the tops. Write the names of your guests on there. And there you go. That's our little uh, Easter Bunny's Garden. Carrot cake, edible soil on the top. Uh, lovely little uh, salted caramel um, gel in there. And the candied carrots. Hey everyone, hope you've enjoyed this week's uh, tasting menu. Uh, wishing you all a really happy Easter. Hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, hope the weather's fantastic. Um, always courses. Um, if you had a cheese course, um, starting off with the goat's cheese tomato, risotto, the lamb, the lasagna, a little uh, bit of fun with this carrot cake dessert. Um, remember, we'll be back next week. Uh, you Chef continuing. Um, loads of menus on the website to order from. Uh, remember you can mix and match, so this is a tasting menu this week, but normally we have our free, that's our free starts, free mains, two desserts and cheese. You can completely design your own menu, loads of fun. And like this today, pretty simple to put together, uh, lots of fun. You're the chef at home, we do all the hard work for you. So we'll be back, have a look at the website, check out the new menus and have a great Easter.